Hello, friends. I am that I am Sarah of Sovereign Mind and Biological Autonomy. Welcome to the September Satsang. And this is part of the Anatomy of Light series. We started the Anatomy of Light series in December of 2023. Our series before in 2023, all of the year, um, Katumi and I, Katumi, who is an ascended master who namasteed on earth for 24 years after his God self realization experience expression. We did playing in the peas in 2023. So we're in the Anatomy of Light series. The one before was playing in the peas. And if you don't know what the peas are, they're not those little round green things. The peas are potentials, possibilities, probabilities, and passageways. Speaking of the fourth P, passageways, we did a six-month program called the Rhythm of Further, blowing down and widening rings of being. The Rhythm of Further, where you dance to the pulse of the rhythm of I am consciousness. Your inimitable, cannot be copied, subjective, not we are all one, but subjective oneness, third circle of creation. If you came from Crimson Circle and watched the Tobias and listened or read or absorbed the Tobias materials, a lot of what Katumi and I have done over our four and a half, four and a half years working together is build upon that beautiful database of materials. Tobias was, um, is an ascended master and was channeled for a good long while, over a decade, at the Crimson Circle organization. I spent some time there, you may know, um, but left because something was missing, right? Something was missing. Realization from the neck down. <sighs> what does realization from the neck down mean, right? It, it means embodying the conceptual realization. Energy and consciousness cannot come together in time and space. Energy and consciousness cannot come together in time and space. So it is often that, well, often, I would say 100% of the time, unless you're some sort of superhuman who we don't know about yet, give me a call. I'd love to hear about it. Um, realization occurs outside of the constructs of time and space. For most people that happens outside of time and space, they may tie up some loose ends and little r relative reality, classic earth reality, and then they dissolve their human form and off they go. Maha Samadhi, right? And you ascend and you stop the reincarnation cycle experience. Beautiful, lovely, not what we're doing here. So the Anatomy of Light series, and if you're just watching the YouTube series and you're just on the newsletter, you get the, the broad topics, but you're not getting the depth, which happens in our intimate online programs, which happens in our Patreon page. Everything we do is about energy and consciousness coming together and embodying realization from the neck down. Right. So I could talk for days, hours. When I get ready to do the Sot song, I go into a database of every Sot song I've ever recorded and will record. It already exists in a field. Here it is. It's in the cloud, right? It's in the cloud. And I just go in and I download which Sot song I think is most appropriate for you all here today. And Katumi gives me some really good input. Katumi has worked with me, teaching me how to embody light and shine my light, um, as well as others, um, so I can show you. I do not channel. It's very rare that I channel. And when I do, I do feel like I'm giving a piece of myself away. When I did 
channeled Katumi because it was a dire, urgent circumstance. I negotiated with him a long time on that, on his ungrouping message. You'll find that on the YouTube page, special message from Katumi. Um, I, uh, you could see how much I don't like to do it. I made it a little bit dramatic so you could see if you're listening to channeled materials from someone who's constantly doing that, it's going to be fragmented at some point. That it, it requires an intense fragmentation to put yourself aside and allow a being to come into your body. I come from a yogi lineage. I'm not talking about six pack abs lady down the street in the yoga studio. I'm not talking about hardcore discipline, renunciation, monk life. I'm talking about real deal yoga. Yoga means to yoke. Yoga is the science, science, facts, research, backed up by data. Yoga is the science of bringing energy and consciousness together. And that's what I teach here. And that's what Katumi taught me. So he's passing it down in a traditional way from uh, teacher to student, guru to disciple. Those words are so loaded and people get so upset about them, but it's often a marketing technique. Be your own guru. There's no one else but you. Da, da, da. It's like, okay, cool. That you can you do it on your own. I do it on my own. I'm by myself. I know who I am. Um, <laughs> I don't do it by myself. And I'm just on the precipice of truly understanding who I am. If I know exactly who I am, I'm not open to any of the peas. I'm not open to the unknown unknowns. I'm not open to the deep, deep mysteries that go beyond personality, personal and sanity. So someone has a conceptual realization, right? And they, they hang out there for a little bit, could be four minutes, could be four years. Eventually, and they namaste on earth. They namaste on earth. So they're staying on earth and eventually they get woven back into little r reality, reactivity, negotiating with an external reality rather than navigating internally to allow life to express itself through you. Those holes sound nice and good. What this looks like is you start to notice when you, when the biology takes a step back into God, light, consciousness, truth, whatever you want to call it, I'll call it God. When the biology steps back into that and they start to combine, right? The consciousness starts to change the biological structure. What that looks like is you notice every single program that's running in your body and you rewrite every single program that's running in your body. We're not trying to be program free or condition free. We're rewriting the software codes, the ones and the zeros on how the human operates. We call that the new energy, new energy, human species, new human species. New is another word for Christos, homo Christos. So we're not trying to get rid of all conditioning or programming because then you wouldn't brush your teeth when you woke up in the morning. You wouldn't wake up in the morning. That's a program that says, dear body, it's time to wake up and move around. And then dear body, it's time to go to sleep so we can replenish, right? So we're not getting rid of the programming. We're rewriting the software codes. Um, Saad Guru's book, Inner Engineering, talks a great deal about the human biology of software as coded energy. Adama St. Germain through the Crimson Circle talks about all energy is coded. Yogananda writes about it in the Second Coming of Christ book series, which is way better than any modern Bible. He really rewrote the Bible in the way it was intended. It's called the Second Coming of Christ, two volume series. So there's a universality to all of this. And what rewriting the codes looks like is you're still on earth. 
you still have to pay your bills. You still have to deal with people you haven't gotten rid of, <laughs> like your mother or whoever else. Yeah. So rewriting those codes, it happens naturally, um, but it sure is helpful to have someone who's done it point things out, right? There's no shortcut. You have to do the work for yourself. So I really like that. There, be your own guru. There's nobody out there who knows more than you. I love that for the fact that you have to do the work. No one can do the work for you. However, there's no shortcuts. You can't skip in line. However, there is a way to speed up the process so it doesn't take 30 years. You'll probably die by then and give up. Then, right? So Katumi put me on this accelerated track. I have a say. I haven't lost uh, my sovereignty by working with Katumi. So for the past four and a half years, Katumi has sat with me every day and pointed some things out. He just, he took what would have been 30 years and I probably would have given up and pieced out of here and just said, screw it, it's not worth it. What would have taken 30 years, he whittled down into four and a half years. I've done it on uh, the high-speed train. So I could show you and talk to you about it. Um, so I want to, I really want to talk about the gurus are wrong and bad thing. First of all, I'm not a guru. I don't want to be a guru. What does guru mean? It means dispeller of darkness. My dog is a guru. When I am getting a funk mood, my emotional body's acting up, right? We check on what's going on in the mental body, what's going on in the emotional body, what's going on in the body of wisdom, the astral body, what's going on in the body of knowingness or nos, the causal body. When we know what's going on, when we check the weather, it won't yank us around into reacting to a relative illusory reality. Instead, we navigate internally and our external relative reality matches what's going, it reacts and matches and flows together, inner and outer worlds, merges one. Katumi and I, our first channel together was about inner and outer worlds merging as one. I uh, don't just take Katumi's word for it. Anytime a new concept is introduced, I have a library of uh, ancient yogic text and um, writings, um, accounts, documentation, um, from mystics, right? They mystics that came, Christian mystics, Islamic mystics, uh, Hindu mystics, yogi mystics. And I go back and I say, where did this come from? Where did this originate? So everything we do here is backed up by a ton of research. I have a master's degree in public administration. I learned how to research everything. I'm really, really organized. I also have a business background. So I balance the budgets and everything here. I learned all the technology. I'm not doing this as like, if this were about like me shining my face on here and being like, follow me, buy my products. I need the money. I don't need the fucking money, right? This is about, I have a deep, deep passion for being embodied light, homo luminous being on earth to bring the Christ consciousness to earth. Not to check a box or be better than anybody else or say, I did it. No, no, I really want the re part of the deal with Katumi is like, I'm going to do this for you and you're going to teach it from an embodied space because that's what it's going to take to bring the Christ consciousness to earth, to have people teach it from an embodied space, not from a cartoon character who's channeled for decades. I'm not picking on one person. There's a ton of people out there. They channel for decades. And as a result, their body and their subtle bodies and physical bodies are completely fragmented. If I look at it, it looks like um, the, the game Tetris, um, you know, with the falling blocks and you're trying to put them all together. It looks like Tetris, but with a malfunction, right? So... I'm firing on all cylinders here. Thanks to Katumi. I did not do this alone. I don't know better than everyone else. I am not my own guru. <laughs> Yogananda, Paramahansa Yogananda came to the United States in 1920s. 
So over a hundred years ago, he came to the United States. He walked into an auditorium filled with Americans in 1920. They could barely handle a Jewish person at that time in the city he was in, Boston, you know, but to see a guy in a turban and silk robe with long hair and, you know, what? But he was received so well. He got on stage, he got on stage and he told the whole audience, God lives in your spine. These are people who only have a concept of God from the church where they need to give 10% of what they make to it and it's hell and damnation, right? So he comes in to this, uh, it was like a convocation, a world convocation on different religions. And he came in and he said, God lives in your spine. God lives in your spine, right? Guru, dispeller of darkness. So that's crazy. Yogananda introduced the concept. He called it God self-realization. He introduced it to the West. And this was before the internet. So what he did was he created um, a mailing campaign. You wrote in to the self-realization fellowship and you said, sign me up. And they would mail out lessons every month in the mail. Right. So he mailed out all these self realization I mean, just incredible. Right. And one of his uh, terms that I love so much is the song of the soul. You know, I used to think of the soul as like an entity and he would say, oh, dear Lauren, it's just it's just a song. It's the song of your soul. It's the song of energy. Soul is energy. He would always tell me and soul's job, it gets the soul can get kind of stuck in wants and needs and soulmates and all that stuff. But the soul has this, this element of being the charioteer, right? Imagine a horse-drawn carriage, right? And the horses are taking the carriage, right? And the person driving the, the horse-drawn carriage is the charioteer, right? So the soul is the charioteer. It's one of its roles. There's many, right? That song of the soul takes you back to source God or spirit, a lot of people in the West, rightfully so, are afraid of the word God and afraid of the concept, concept of God. So they just stop it. They crown the wrong king. They crown the wrong king. They put the crown on soul and say, okay, I'm realized my soul is in charge of everything. How limiting. The soul goes back to source, yet it doesn't return to objective oneness. It creates the third circle of creation, Tobias Crimson Circle materials, the third circle of creation, the soul goes home to source. We've talked about it over and over again. Soul and spirit are two different things. Gotta know that. God lives in your spine. God lives in your spine. That's how you shine your light. We just put out, uh, we have, someone told me that on Crimson Circle on Facebook in the forum there, that people are like, where are the light body materials? Where are the light body materials? Well, we have them. We have an eight hour, 34 minute audio book, which are all the light body sessions. You can buy over seven hours of light body sessions, um, videos with explanations, diagrams, fully researched and backed up by actual textbooks, not channeled. I'm living it. Um, so, we have those materials. We have the 365 days flight teaching you how to check the weather. If you don't know what's going on in your mental and emotional astral body of wisdom and the body of knowingness, NOS, causal body, causal body is the bridge to full embodiment. You have to know how it works. You have to be tuned into subtle energy to understand how all this works. There's a lot of, um, people in the West that think if they listen to enough channeled materials, they spend enough money on channeled materials, one day the light body will just happen, right? Well, Jesus Christ himself, it didn't just happen, right? So if it didn't just happen for Jesus through listening to channeled materials, right? Maybe that's a really slim to none chance. Right, you gotta do the work. No one can do the work for you, but you. A guru doesn't do work for you. Might they might come in and clear up a little bit of your karma, 
if you haven't done it, they might sweep out the, the trash in the house in the, in your internal house, but you still have to do the work. So I want to talk about it. Yeshua had a guru in his lost years in India. He was training to act out this play of the crucifixion and the resurrection he knew it was a play. It was an act of consciousness, an act of consciousness. You living and breathing on earth is an act of consciousness. It's a play and it's an act of consciousness. It's not real and it's an act of consciousness. So Yeshua went and trained with Mahavatar Babaji for years so he could reenact this play through the crucial cru he could act out the play of crucifixion to resurrection, right? And develop and have his light body. Mahavatar Babaji is also who I work with. Um, 10 years ago, I was having a long chat with Yeshua, which I have done since I was a very little girl, and preparing me to do this job. <laughs> Preparing me to do my job. I'm doing my job. What are you doing? <laughs> You're doing your job. <laughs> Maybe your job is just to be in joy on earth. If that's it, then make sure you're in joy on earth. Every damn day, choose joy. Every damn day, if that's your job, you do it well. If my job, my divine will job, were to flip burgers at McDonald's, they would be the finest hamburger you have ever had at a McDonald's. Do your damn job. Do it well. Do it with joy, with precision, with accuracy. Right? Oh, I'm in my last lifetime. Well, don't be a slob. Live your last lifetime in full joy and luminosity. Not hiding in your house worried about your bank account. Can't stand it. You're too smart. You're too grand. You're too creatively intelligent to live like that. That's why I get so mad. I'm not mad at you. I'm mad that you're not living your full grandness because life is a beautiful and precious gift. Earth is a beautiful and precious gift. So Yeshua had a guru. So I get really, I have a guru to get all this stuff out. Babaji told me 10 years ago, Yeshua took me to me, told me, he told me you are going to teach Kriya Yoga and people will listen. <laughs> and then I went on to be superstar Chambra. I had 30 extra pounds to carry around because I was drinking wine and trying to protect myself from all the arrows flying at me. <laughs> it's funny now. And what a joke. I mean, really, the games that people play, what a joke. I was the joke. I realized, oh, these people are the jokes. And then I realized I am one of them. I'm a joke. I got to do something about this. I got to find some substance to bring to this circus so that's what i've done i walked out of there and i said i'm going to bring substance to this circus and the circus is me the circus is not those people it's me because i was playing in that right so i everything i do i turn it around immediately on myself and i say if i can see it in somebody else i'm still doing it <sighs> yeah you have to be totally honest with yourself while still loving yourself. Everything I just said was a Kriya. A Kriya is any internal, spontaneous, non-conceptual, experiential motion towards God, truth, or life. Oh, I see these people acting like a circus. I realize the circus is me. I look inside and I add substance to the circus that is me. That's a Kriya. Right? I realize my realization is conceptual. It happened outside of time and space. I need to make a motion back, backing up, right? A lean back into spirit to bring it into time and space. That is a Kriya. I teach Kriya yoga. I am not my own guru. I didn't make up Kriya yoga. It's been passed down over and over and over again. Yeshua used Kriya Yoga to reenact that play, right? So I have people come and, oh, my own guru, 
be your own guru. Gurus are bad. Kill the guru. That is, the rough energy of that. It's often a marketing technique. <laughs> Honestly, like most of it is innocent. Like, oh, that's the cool thing now. Or it sounds really good. Be your own guru. Great. If that works out for you, fantastic. <laughs> good luck. Right. But it's often a marketing technique from someone who wants to teach you something. I'm not, you know, be your own guru. All right. So, I, you know, sometimes people just don't know better. I, I guarantee you the strictest, most rough energy person who's like, oh, he just wants to go and kill all the gurus. What they're really talking about is megalomaniacs. Like their ego, their spiritual ego has become so hungry, power hungry, that and it has some power that it won't let it go. That's a megalomaniac. So definitely we don't want to get involved with a megalomaniac. However, if you do get involved with one of those fake gurus who's a megalomaniac, it's because your spiritual ego needs to have a mirror, right? Every A master wastes nothing. You end up in that scenario, you realize someone's a megalomaniac, you've been giving your money, your time, and your soul to a megalomaniac, it's because you needed to see the spiritual ego at play for yourself right? So you waste nothing. You say, oh God, thank God that person showed me before I ended up too far down the, the path and have to reincarnate all over again, right? So megalomania, bad. Gurus, <laughs> gurus become a four-letter word, right? The guru would never take away your sovereignty. A real guru would show you where to look, not what to see. I would not know what I was doing Shining my light here through the spinal column, through the Pia Mature. We have the Pia Mature materials in our online store. It's very cheap. It goes along with the very cheap audio book because don't need it, you know? Um, I just think it's so distasteful. I would do everything for free, but certain things need an exchange so if someone doesn't get blasted and our bills, um, like this year alone, we've spent uh, $30,000, $40,000 running the space. So my, my goal is to bring money in to pay that off and then have enough money to, for the future project. Really, that's how it works here. Um, I do not a corporation. This is not an LLC. I don't want to hook you. So you never, so you're on like a constant round of giving money, buying things, buying things, another cloud class, another cloud class. I, that's not what I want here. Right. But I would not be where I am without these people and the the people who are the roughest of the energy of that they hate everybody else everybody else is wrong or bad they're doing it for themselves you know it's all just very constipated as katumi likes to say if you're not pooping two to three times a day you're full of shit so most of the people we see who are like this katumi's like they're just constipated <laughs> all right katumi He's like, tell them more about gut health. I'm like, I I'll get there, Katumi. We'll talk about gut health and pooping, I promise. But I what I want to say is even the person who's like so grippy on, you know, anybody sharing anything is bad and da 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 da, -da kill the guru, whatever it is. If Babaji appeared in their house, as he's done for me, they would be a blubbering mess, likely crap their pants, tears would be pouring out of their eyes because you just can't handle that kind of luminosity and love. Another thing a, a guru <laughs> might do for you, um, Ascended Master Moria, who was with me my whole childhood until Katumi came, I still talk to him. We're just not in that intense level of a relationship anymore. My original guru in this life, which I have played that role for him in another lifetime, we don't worry about hierarchy in this world because we're not living in hierarchy layers. This is all happening in an absolute reality. So any of the stuff you're worried about is only happening in a relatively relative reality with megalomaniacs who are obsessed with their spiritual power and like to wield it around. Walk up in the bar, swing in the dick. I'm here. All right. Great. That's an Eddie Murphy raw joke. If you're not a 80s child, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But you know that 
the thing, right? So uh, once I was um, trying to date, which I have given up on because I'm not going to mix my light energy with the rough energy of a giantly programmed human being. I can have human friends. I can respect that, but I'm not going to mix my energy with that. It, the decaying smell cells spell that um, as Katumi warned me, they would. Um, so didn't matter how many showers you take, decaying smell cells smell that to me. Um, with love and compassion. Uh, but when I was trying to date, I was like, this isn't love, right? Moria put his hand on my back, took up my whole back. I'm a, I'm a tiny person. I don't know if you guys know that. I'm tiny. Uh, he put his whole hand on my back and I, the most amazing, crazy, peace, love, joy, samadhi, bliss, forget a human orgasm. It will never even come close. Total bliss, samadhi, ecstasy. I've done every drug, didn't compare, rolled through my body. And he said, this, he was hitting me like this. He said, this is what love feels like. Anything that doesn't feel like this is not love. It's a lie. That's a Kriya. If it's not love, it's a lie, right? So if dating someone did not make me feel like him putting his hand on my back, it's time to go. Guess what? That doesn't exist because no one's fully <laughs> that I've met. I'm sure they're out there. Where are you? I'd love to have a conversation. But that's another example of a Kriya. And it's also another example of a guru relationship. Right? You don't have to use that word. Uh, you guys are obsessed with, you hate the word teacher. You hate the word guru. You hate the people like yoga. You know, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. This is what, my name is Sarah. And this is what I teach. From direct <laughs> experience. From direct experience. But with a lot of help with a lot of help, I would not be able to do this alone. There's no way. Someone told me that if I got my realization too quick and I left Crimson Circle too quick, I'd be lonely. Couldn't be further from the truth. I have real friends and real love in my life. Real friends and real love. So the PM Mature materials talk about how when you realize the spinal column is where consciousness enters the human biology, um, the PM Mature, become, there, ne there needs to be mas some massage work, massaging work, right? To create, we're not getting rid of it. We're not doing anything to it except making it a little more fluid, malleable, and permeable. It's like a sponge. So we're making the holes in the sponge a little bit bigger through the PM Mature materials. I had someone tell me, we're all doing it differently. I'm not doing it through the PM Mature. Um, there's a lot of stuff that will be different for you. You are inimitable. You cannot be copied. You are having a subjective experience. We all lose our mind after realization, for example, when it goes into the stretch and snap. It, it goes from a mind that's in the local linear to a mind that can comprehend the infinite. We'll all go crazy <laughs> in between while that's ha that big quantum leap is happening, when the mind makes the quantum leap into the new energy into the Christos consciousness, the energy of the mind combines with uh, consciousness of the God mind, mind of light, as Babaji has been calling it since the fall of Atlantis, <laughs> right? We have history, we have background, we have research. Everything's backed up with research. The yogis did a great, have written down the history of Atlantis, not from a temples of Tien perspective, but from a much larger perspective. So this is what I'm going at. There's some things that we'll have in common. There's some things that we'll all have in common. 
going crazy after initial conceptual realization as the soul goes home to spirit, how you experience that crazy will be unique to you. But I had someone tell me that the PMA tour is not how they're going to get to shine their light. And well, first of all, it's not a means to an end. If it's happening naturally, what our materials do is just give you a little support. Yogananda's in them. He comes with the materials. Yogananda will be there with you to help stretch it out if you want him there. Um, no one's going to try to control or manipulate you. We're not in the temples of Tian. They sank. They're gone. Integrate it. Integrate it. Integrate your temples of Tian person if you're one of those people. Just integrate it. Integrate your old crap. Stop putting it on the now and other people <laughs> and the concept of other people. However, to shine your light, right? Okay, so 99.99% of humans are born with a nose. Let's just, I'm just picking it, and ears, right? Unless something tragically happened in the womb or whatever. You're given a nose, standard issued biology. You're given a nose, you have teeth, you have eyes, you have ears. That's anatomy. The anatomy of the standard biology is you have eyes that see, ears that hear, assuming everything is healthy, a nose that smells, a mouth that talks and tastes. That is the anatomy of the standard biology. The anatomy of light, it's not really up for negotiation. The light comes in, consciousness, light, comes in through the back door, right? God lives in your spine, which has been taught since the fall of Atlantis when we started, all of us gathered and said, what do we do about this horrific standard, bi standard biological form and how do we fix it, right? So everybody's gonna have their light come from the spine if they radiate their light and the Pia Mature needs to become more permeable to shine your light. It's not really something about I'm doing it differently. Do you see what I'm saying? It's this is going to happen if you shine your light. And you might as well know what's happening. Because it makes it happen a, a little bit easier, a little bit faster. Because God knows we don't want to drag out a 30-year embodiment thing. It took Katumi about seven years and uh, from realizing that Katumi wasn't really Katumi, there was Aki Ra, his I am consciousness, not his soul, not his soul, his I am consciousness. So from when Katumi met his I am consciousness, I have a story too like that. And then we have a little mini movie about it and that'll come out next month. Um, along with a free book, the Rhythm of Further book will be out next month. Um, but it's not like something you can skip or do differently. Just like you were born with a nose, you were born with a spine and the Pia Mature, which is a meningi that protects the spine in all biological forms, <laughs> right? So it's not like you can just bypass it. Um, it's really hard. I mean, a lot of people, when they write us, they're still talking in jargon that I have to like Google. Like, I don't know what ML5 is. ML5, ML6. Um, and I started to realize they're talking about master's life five or six. I, I have no idea. Right. If you haven't, if you're not pooping two to three times a day, you're full of shit. <laughs> right. So I just want to like, you know, this is what our materials are for. It's not going to be for everybody. If you are walking around speaking in spiritual quotes from somewhere else, right? Those are programs. Every time you walk around repeating spiritual quotes or programs, it might be a better program to replace the one it's coming from though. A master never apologizes. That's one I've heard recently, you know, great. Um, and that person's that often the type of person who repeats spiritual quotes a master never apologizes or whatever it is. Um, they also are the anti-guru people. <laughs> Sorry. 
they're also usually the anti-guru people, yet they haven't written their own program for themselves ever, right? So a true guru would say, what kind of program do you want to write today? The way Katumi has worked with me on that, he says, oh, Sarah, good morning. What kind of adventure are we going to have today? What kind of adventure are we going to have today? What Katumi is saying is what kind of energy code are we going to rewrite in our body today? In our expression and our experience, realization from the neck down, restoring the relevance and importance of the biological body in the embodied enlightenment experience. <laughs> so <clears throat> the difference between uh, tons of cloud classes and spiritual quoted materials, and we have an Instagram page. I will never put a spiritual quote on that Instagram page. Um, it's just to let you know what we're doing here um, and not debate anything. There's, to me, the lowest forms of intelligence are gossip and it's so boring. It's so boring. The lowest forms of intelligence are gossip and uh, opinion forming. Opinion forming. Liking this or that in a illusory reality from an illusory personality or personal insanity. <laughs> right. So the difference between that is you think you're doing it for yourself, but you're just running all the programs that came to you from the online garbly gook that you paid for and having an actual real teacher put his hand on his back say this is what love is or Katumi saying what kind of adventure are we going to have today which is a question what codes do you want to rewrite in your body today he's not telling you what to rewrite we don't have a i mean i could quote katumi all day long i could create a whole social media account just for katumi quotes and people would repost them and i'd have a ton of engagement and there'd be a thousand more followers and subscribers on youtube but i'm not going to do it i'm trying to show you how to do this for yourself so you can experience what i'm experiencing which is ecstasy bliss not having any problems whatsoever, right? Unless it's for fun and a little creative tension to get things going. You cut me off in traffic. Whoa. But there's not one single atom in my body that's actually in the, ugh. there's not. That's the difference. You're still playing. You're still interacting with life, but the, the greatest part of you rests in absolute reality, in the truth, in the light. And allows the human to have a little fun from time to time. <laughs> All right. So let's see. So I wanted to talk about the materials, um, where I come from, how I learn these things. Yeshua works with me all the time. We just finished the divine blueprint materials, which he taught me. That He said that's how he healed people. When he had to heal them, he went into their divine blueprint and rearranged things for them. However, because we've gone from new age to new energy, from the Piscean age, Yeshua, to the age of Aquarius, um, I show the, how, the divine blueprint that Yeshua showed me to you so you can do it for yourself. There you can be your own guru. I'm just showing you where to look, not what to see. Maybe suggesting to make an eight degree turn to the right or three degree turn to the left as you navigate your inner caverns. We're not looking for a way out. We're looking for more doorways in. We're not looking for a way out. We're looking for more doorways in. And I teach Kriya Yoga to show you where there's some more doorways to open up potentials, possibilities, probabilities, and passageways that all exist in the cellular structure that is your biological body. Katumi has taught me how to feed it right, how to have gut health, um, you know, I, I can enjoy a nice glass of wine and a steak on a very, very special occasion, but the amount of energy it takes to digest it takes away from me shining my light. I'm not anti-steak or wine. I'm just naturally attracted 
to my banana spinach almond smoothie that I had this morning. I, I have permission to do whatever I want. I'm not on a special diet. However, you'll find that when you have the hand on your back and you experience the ecstasy of the I am that I am and real love, this is what real love have, feels like. Real love does not have emotion. Real love does not have an object. It's not in the subject object split. Notice I always say, I am love with you. That's because I don't want the subject object split in there. I love you like human romantic relationships, there's an object of your affection. Not in all cases. I'm sure that there are some couples out there who just sit in love together. I don't know where they are, but I'm sure that they exist, right? But that would be totally unconditional love. It's not so you could pay your joint mortgage. That's a roommate. That's not love. That's a roommate. That is a... And it's totally fine as long as you're not ignorant of what it is and isn't. That's the other thing I want to talk about. We're not aiming for human perfection here. It's just about awareness where you don't get caught up in thinking something's real. The person who did you wrong five years ago, right? And I know this because I've done it, right? The person who did you wrong five years ago, that's important data to have. You're being abused, get out of the situation. Don't hang on to it though, let it dissolve. So we're not getting rid of things. Your life is not gonna be humanly perfect. However, you never step out of or get sucked back into thinking it's real or permanent. You realize the, the states of things. So we're not trying for perfection. We're just moving beyond the ignorance and getting lost in another loop, right? Repeating loop, repeating pattern. You make a new pattern through the new energy routine. Those of you who are generously giving us $11 a month to help pay our publishing costs or web hosting costs or this cost or that cost. I had to buy a new computer cost. If you're, you're doing the $11 a month, you will get our new energy routine video this month. Feeling in my body has so much to say. So I'm just feeling into what it wants to say. Um, practically, applicably in your daily life, one of the best things Katumi helped me with was getting my gut health right. So my body is not spending so much energy on the gut dynamics. And if your gut is backed up, you don't feel good, you behave nasty, you attract feeders into your life. It's almost instant, right? So getting your gut health right. Uh, natural ways to do that without taking a bunch of pills. At the end of every meal, I eat something fermented, like pickles, like kimchi. I don't do dairy because it makes my, it ruins my meditations and my samadhi, um, unless it's a special occasion. Sometimes your soul needs a piece of pizza, right? But, uh, or some yogurt. I do cashew or coconut yogurt right? Just to get your gut health in order. Because if your gut is functioning and you're eliminating waste two to three times a day, it has a huge implication for all the stuff happening in your biological body. Kachimi was allowed to get one uh, session out at the Crimson Circle on embodying light. He had one hour. <laughs> he had one hour and he chose to focus on digestive health in that one hour. And he even sang the poop song to them, which he's been singing to us for years before that happened. The famous Katumi poop song. I poop in the sunshine, I poop in the rain. I poop to get rid of all of the pain. And he has a variety of versions of the poop song. Right. But it, the first thing Katumi said to me was, let's get your digestion working. Um, so now if I do eat the steak and have the glass of wine, which is so rare, but when I do get to do it, it's so good. When that happens, I process it so quickly and then I move on. I metabolize it. Um, I metabolize all of the relativity of the world. Right. The crowds that are coming here for Labor Day weekend. Um once you metabolize your own stuff, 
completely and you namaste on earth, you will realize that you are metabolizing for earth. Gaia is ascending. She's almost completely ascended. There's a little bit left. And in May of this year, people who have done our programs and myself are going to go to a, a special place. I won't say it here. It's a surprise and help her help. Gaia came to me in a dream. She said, I need you to go here and help me get the last little bit of myself ascended. And she's been my, one of my best friends. And I said, sure, Gaia, I'll, I'll phone some of our longest and greatest supporters and we'll fly over there. I'm not teaching a workshop. I'm not making money off of ascending Gaia. God, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Come to my workshop, $2,000 will help Gaia ascend. Nope. Called some people who've been doing our programs for a long time and said, can any of you make it? This is what Gaia said in the dream. They all said yes. So we'll be doing that soon. But once you start, this is like when I get really into the advanced stuff, I don't want to work. I'm My job is not to work with people trying to do soul realization and improve their human lives, making deals with, if, if Adamus sends me some money, I'll do X, Y, and Z. What in the world? I don't want to work with people like that. You guys are lovely. I'm sure that you're going to get it. And I'm sure there's someone else who can help you way better than me. It's not me. My job is for the super committed, super advanced beings who are going to bring full luminosity into this biological form in this lifetime who aren't playing games with themselves or worried about fake gurus or what who said and that said and I will show you how to shine your light. I know how. Once you metabolize all the stuff for yourself, you're metabolizing the poison of you, right? You're integrating it. A lifetime that may you may be realized, but you may have a lifetime where realize, realization hasn't reached that lifetime. And they're throwing a world-class fit, right? So the divine blueprint materials through Yeshua, we go in and we navigate. We don't negotiate with this lifetime. We navigate in a Kriya, any internal motion, non-conceptual experience toward God, truth, or life. So then when that lifetime realizes it's realized, you metabolize that. Once all the lifetimes are realized, now they're all going to go through their light body expression experience. Once that happens, you will start metabolizing things for planet earth. In a nod to the fabulous Gaia, who's been stuck <laughs> in that, in the core of earth for, you know, eons of time. Um, you will run timelines through yourself. One of the things that I spend a lot of my gut health in my fully luminous new energy human body, right? A lot of that, I work with uh, drug addicts because what happens is um, they're getting, they're not like, for example, a child is born to a drug addicted mother. So let's say she's addicted to meth or fentanyl or whatever's going on these days. The baby comes out predisposed and addicted to the drug too, right? Oftentimes the child may not make it. It gets sucked back up into the near earth realms. There's no full life review. And it just keeps going through this crazy cycle where they're not making any spiritual progress because they're going just right back and like a drug addict dies, there's still a drug addict in the near earth realm. So it's not like they get peace. The level of consciousness that you have when you die is the level of consciousness you will have after death. If everyone was going to become super conscious after they died, as Yogananda says in one of his famous Kriya Yoga talks is that if that were true we should all just go jump off the side of a cliff and become angels right now no the level of con you have to do it here in physical earth reality to make 
to have some growth, some acceleration to get to the light, right? So a lot of these souls don't have any time or space to have a reflection period before they incarnate again, to choose the parents who are bringing them in with any sort of consciousness. So I spend a lot of time there. I'm not gonna teach anything about that to you all because it's my special space. When you become a fully luminous human, you will realize you have a special talent, special area that you will work in. You won't be bored anymore. You're bored because you're floating on the surface and you're too lazy, scared, whatever, to dive deep into the unknown unknowns. And or you're part of a spiritual group where you start making the descent down into the unknown unknowns and you get sucked back up into the next big thing. I see it over and over and over again. Am I going to reach everybody? No. 20, 40 people I get that gets in there. I will die in peace, <laughs> die. I will dissolve my biological form completely, no bones left <laughs> in total peace. Um, it's not for everybody. If you wanna have your full luminosity in this life, there has to be certain things set up. Um, there has to be a passion for it mainly. You need to be curious, teachable, and have a passion for it. Those are the only three requirements. Passion, to bring the Christ consciousness to earth. Approaching everything with curiosity rather than disdain, critique, opinions. Curiosity doesn't mean accepting something as true just because so-and-so said it. Curiosity means, hmm, that's interesting. I hadn't thought of that that way. What does that mean for me? There's energetic maturity instead of, well, Adam didn't say that. Okay, great. Um, go somewhere else. <laughs> um, passion, curiosity, willingness to explore yourself, willingness to be totally honest with yourself and still love yourself, to see the nastiest, darkest pieces of yourself. I see something every day that's not so nice. I still love myself. That is a Kriya, to see the nastiest, Part of yourself I have a poor me story right I put all these materials out I beg people to pay $11 a month so I have enough money to get the materials out and uh, I have a poor me little facet and I keep telling her oh my god you are such a victim you know I'm talking to myself and um because <laughs> she is she's a little victim right and I still love myself. I still 100% love myself, even though I can see clearly that little victim pattern. Right? So I, again, this is not about human perfection. It's just being, oh, not getting lost in the ignorance. It's moving beyond ignorance. You can still see the not so this the human parts of yourself not try to edit change make it nice whatever and love yourself i was doing some deep dive research at, into the yoga yoga sutras and there was a yoga sutra these were written after the fall of atlantis uh, by the way a yoga sutra that says don't Get, go gathering perspectives to form a positive image of yourself. And I just thought it was such, you know, that's what the human personality, personal insanity is. It gathers perceptions to create an image of itself, none of which is real. Your personality is not real play with it, change it. One day you're an extrovert, one day you're an introvert. One day you're like, oh, I love everybody all the time. And one day you're not. This is a lot of and. I went on this beautiful trip to Patagonia, Chile, the fifth most Southern city in the world. And then another two hour drive. So almost to Antarctica. 
And uh, so it was a long trip. And, you know, the airport, there was weather, there were canceled flights, there were people sleeping on the floor of the airport. It was total airport chaos, you know? And I was walking through the total airport chaos and without Moria putting his hand on my back, I was sobbing, crying, soaking shirt because everything is just so beautiful and perfect. Everything is just so beautiful and perfect. Couldn't stop crying, put my baseball hat on, tears. I mean, my shirt was completely wet from tears of joy and love and ecstasy in the most unholy of places, an airport after a three day flight cancellation frenzy. <laughs> and my nervous system was still really annoyed with the people in the airport. My nervous system was totally dysregulated. I was aware that it was dysregulated instead of being I gotta get out of this airport. I can't go on this trip. I'll have to cancel this trip. You see the, the nervous system is dysregulated. And then there's, oh, I am, then I am. And this world is so delicious and humans are amazing. If you look at humans with disgust, it's just a mirror. You're disgusted with yourself. If you find humans disgusting, you're disgusted with your own programming. So instead of directing all your disgust at humanity, use that energy, rechannel that energy into rewriting the energy codes in your biology. What kind of adventure are we going to have today? Is a yoga kriya made into Katumi style? What kind of adventure are we going to have today? But really he's saying, what new energy codes are you rewriting today? And that my friends is Kriya Yoga. All right, I am that I am. Sarah of sovereign mind, a mind of light and biological autonomy. My biology is a direct expression of I am consciousness rather than an unconsciously programmed reactivity machine. I'm joined with my BFF and your BFF, biggest fucking fan, Katumi Lalsing. <laughs> and we are love with you. We are love with you. No subject object split. If you want to learn more, come on our Patreon page. There's a ton of free stuff. And for $11 a month, <laughs> you will get a lot more of the Katumi materials. Because he worked with me for four and a half years, and he, he'll be leaving in June of 2025 from here. But I will still be getting out. He gave me so many materials. I will still be getting them out long past 2025. As I said, we have a 300 page book called The Rhythm of Further. We did it to support opening the passageways in all of creation, Heaven's Cross, for those of you from somewhere else. And uh, we put it in book form. It's over 300 pages. It will be free for you, for anybody who is on our website. You just log in. It'll be on the reader portal page. You can download it, keep it, and play in the six passageways that Katumi laid out for us in that beautiful, beautiful program that is what is life beyond realization. All right. Feedback, actual feedback, not quoted program reactivity. Actual feedback is always welcome. Questions are always welcome. Send us a note. All the links of everything we mentioned are uh, below this video and we will see you if you only listen to the Salt Songs. We'll see you next month in October.